All right, so the big boy and the bad boy has dropped in to Shanghai, and they mean business. My name is Paul Barron. This is Tech Path, and guess who we're going to be talking about? That's right, Audi, the big German bad boy that's coming with all of its might in the EV space, and they've done it with the A6 e-tron concept. Now you have to understand the Audi lineup. Uh, it starts at the A3, a uh, little mini car kind of thing. Great, great car. Uh, then they go to the A4, which is uh, the bad boy. I love the A4. And then they go to the A6. And when you look at the A6, it is so awesome as in terms of a luxury vehicle. Even though it already has a big luxurious electric sedan uh, space with the e-tron GT, Audi has just shown a design study for another A6, and that is coming out. Built on the new premium platform, which is the PPE in short, an EV-only chassis architecture, uh, which is a Porsche and Porsche, and Audi uh, co-developed platform, which I think is a good one. When you drive the Porsche Taycan, I've had a chance to jump in one of those. That is a bad mo mo, uh, and it is a great car. It has a little short on range in terms of the overall uh, range. You, I'm sure you guys know this if you're looking and shopping for Luxury vehicles, Porsche is kind of the only one on the on the map right now. Just like the e-tron GT though, and the Taycan, it is a rapid charge at a very high rate. Remember, that's the 800, um, I think it's the 800, uh, 800 amp, yeah. 270 kilowatt, Audi claims it can travel up to 700 kilometers, which is 435 miles on one charge based on the WLTP test cycle, which is a little bit lower than EPA. Once EPA comes in and tests this, Probably going to drop, I'm going to say, in the uh, maybe mid to high threes, uh, which would still be an amazing uh, range for this vehicle because you're getting into Model S territory, which is 400 miles, even though there are those who say that a, 300, uh, a Model S is truly around 300 miles. Uh, the battery pack is a 100 kilowatt hour pack, uh, which is a respectable pack for this, um, but a mention is made that the platform can accommodate even a larger pack. This would be interesting if they go, if do bolster up the pack. Uh, I would be interested in that vehicle because that, that's a great road car that you really can go across country in if you're not needing the SUV function um, and you need that kind of uh, scenario. This could be a car that could really kind of uh, lead out and, and be a good, you know, a good option. And I would also put this up against the EQS. And if you're an Audi buyer or a Mercedes buyer, you already know this, but the likelihood is, is that the Audi is a little bit more of a value uh, and I won't say it's le less expensive, but it, it's more of a value. You get a lot more power for your punch. And the price point is quite a bit better than the, an equal vehicle like in the E-Class for the Mercedes if you're going head-to-head -head for the A6. So that's one thing to be into consideration if you're thinking, hey, I'm getting ready to roll off lease here in two years. What's going to be my next Audi or my next Benz or my next car? Uh, it's going to be an EV, that's for sure. And Audi is definitely going to be pulling it. So Charging 5 to 80% in under 25 minutes, and also a 10-minute charging of over 300, 186 miles of range. That's pretty impressive, I think, when you look at how, you know, superchargers work across America in the Tesla system. You look at Electrify America, who's putting a lot of supercharged 150 kilowatt uh, systems in place, which are really going to amp up, and they're going to the 800 amp uh, versus the 400 amp. Uh, that, I think, is going to be a big uh, scenario, too, because you're just getting a new infrastructure around the charging, which is kind of cool. This is a hatchback, which has been the case uh, of these cars in the past. It has kind of that A8 design, if you know the difference between the A, uh, kind of the, I think it's, yeah, the A8 and the A6 or the, uh, yeah, the A6, the A8. Um, but it has that kind of hatchback, uh, very slung back in, which I think, again, goes back to styling cues to go against the Model S. It's to say it, but it's you're going to have to get into that kind of scenario. We've got that hatchback design, but still looks like a um, you know a, a normal sedan. Here's the cool thing: drag coefficient 0 0.022, not quite as low as the Benz at 0.20, a little bit blocky, but I think it's because of that big front end that Audi has designed into their vehicles, and it's really more a brand perception that I just don't think the designers and engineers will let go of. It just is what it is. Matrix LED headlights that also can protect, or excuse me, project images if you park it facing a wall. So basically you've got a movie in your car that you can pull up to a wall, project out on it, and bam. I wonder if it's got some really good surround sound. That would be cool. Some good surround sound, camp mode, kind of whole thing. Get this going, your girl sitting over here on the side. This would be a lovely vehicle for you. So they have this cool color, it's called Helio Silver. Why would you put this Helio Silver on a car? 
ah, oh, I get it, because the thing's highly reflective, which means reducing your climate control system, not as working as hard, means less battery juice needed to run the thing. Who and why have we not done this before? This should be like built in, like we should have like solar reflectors that just basically, basically makes these vehicles in, invisible and, and or, oh, this would be beautiful, a refractionary solar power system that just basically brings power to the battery itself. That's probably coming from Audi is my guess. The point is, is Audi is on their game. I think Audi is one of the unique brands that is bringing some very unique design and also they're doing it in an all in manner, which is I respect that about a company that says, listen, this is the future and we understand that. So congrats to you and the boys over at Audi. You guys are doing a great job. The only thing I would say is the design theme inside and the interior, you've got to kind of transition. I get that you're trying to transition out of ICE vehicles and you spend a lot of money on this design, but you got to move to the next layer of design. Even though this car from the interior looks amazing, uh, there are some elements to it that I would look and change, especially in the display system. I think that's one of the things that you have to really kind of focus on, especially with the fact that software is going to drive these vehicles in the future. So be thinking 10 years ahead. I'm sure you guys already are. PPE platform is for sure. Audi claims that the first production vehicle will be um, basically underpinned that it'll arrive uh, second half of 2022. That would be cool if it comes in next year and that it will be used in both B, C, and D segment vehicles in the future, both in regular cars as well as SUVs. So the PPE platform, I think, is something that Audi is working on in terms of developing kind of a strategy to basically give their whole line of EVs a structural component, not from a structural pack side, but from a structural aspect from a technology advancement to be able to give them a baseline to build on, kind of like a building block, Lego for EV kind of thing that can really kind of move them up the scale in terms of speed, speed to release new designs, speed to release, um, you know, updates, all those kind of things. When I say updates, body updates, interior updates, things of that nature. So that's going to be cool to watch as Audi continues to set the pace for a lot of the German EV manufacturers, including even VW, which I think has done a really good job with this. So if you're listening over at the podcast right now, leave a rating over there, hit five stars real quick, then Go over to YouTube, search Paul Barron Network, and subscribe because you're going to get a chance to see all these beautiful releases out of the Shanghai Auto Show. Also, if you have an idea for the show, shoot us an email to producer at revernetworks.com or hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We will catch you next time right here on TechPath.